Hi, John Shannon here, CEO at Vegetables WA. Welcome to the next in our series of webinars. Today, um, we're lucky enough to have Chris Puckridge, who is a rural financial counsellor with Rural West, with us to talk around um, things to do with businesses and um, moving forward. So, um, might be a good opportunity to introduce Chris and let us know a little bit more about what Rural West does. Yeah, thanks, John, and thanks for having me. Um, yeah, look, I'll start with Rural West. It's probably a name people don't know that name. They, we were formerly, we've always operated under the brand of the Rural Financial Counselling Service of WA. And it's, uh, uh, we're, we're funded by the federal and the state government. Uh, and our, our mandate is to assist uh, primary producers in, in rural and regional Western Australia uh, to help, you know, build their businesses to support them if they're in difficulty. Uh, so there's 12 councillors like me across the state based in all different locations. And uh, there's a couple based in Perth. I'm one in Perth, I'm based in, in Perth. Um, we all work from home anyway, so we're fairly flexible. Um, just a few things about us, John, that just so like people yep. just to understand is that we're, while we are funded by the government, we're an agency um, and we work under a very specific uh, act that allows us to be confidential. So any information that we um, discuss with our clients is confidential. We don't you know, share it with government departments or anything like that. We use a, 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 a very powerful model uh, developed by the Harvard Business School and it's a, uh, the Harvard uh, Business Planning Framework. And it helps people understand the position they're in because a lot of people don't realise the position they're actually in. And so, so we use that framework to, so people get to see where they fit. We're neutral, we're not, we're not sponsored by anyone, we don't sell anything. So, um, you know, it's a great, I, I, I've, I've worked in agriculture all my life and I've worked in commercial businesses and and, and they have a job to do. And part of their job as a commercial business is to, to sell things. And, and in this job, I, all of my, my role is to help people get the best they can. We counsel as not advisors. So we don't tell people what to do. Um, we, we assist people to make their own decisions. And, and our aim is for people not to need us all the time. It, it's basically getting people on track and then letting them go, you know, it's, it's not about us being there every day to tell them what to do or whatever. And I, I really love this job because of that. We're not judgmental. We're not here to say you're, you're not as good as you should be or whatever, but we're here to help people look at how they can improve their business. They could be a great business already, but it might just help them improve. And finally, as I said, we're funded by the state government of Western Australia uh, through DPIRD, and then we're funded by the federal uh, government through the Department of Agriculture and Water. Uh, we, we have a lot of great support and uh, we work a lot with organisations like Vegetables WA and you know many others, the WA Farmers Federation, the Pastoralists of the Graziers, the Pork Producers, you know, you know there's many many different groups that we work across. There's no cost to our service uh, to primary producers and we also, uh, the reason we changed our name to Rural West was we also work with other small businesses um, throughout WA, you know, in towns and that as well. So we're not just working with farms and that we work with all sorts of things. So that, that was a, probably a long introduction, but it's, uh, I hope that's covered it. Okay, so um, I'll, I'll just run through the, a bit of a program, John, of things that I think um, we can talk about. And, and, and again, we can dwell on a few and, and, and skim over some. So I'll leave you to guide me on what, which ones you think you want to talk about more. Um, I guess for the, the preamble for this though, is that, you know, every business is different. Every single member of Vegetables WA has a very different structure. So uh, anything we say today should be taken as general advice and, or, or as, as general information, it's not advice. Um, and, and really we encourage um, people to call us after this and I'll, I'll give you my uh, our contact number at the end um, 
and then you know we can have a one-on-one -on -one discussion about their business even if it's just a phone call just to have a chat or if they want to have uh you know more um, interaction with us after that it's up to them we we're uh, we're very flexible in how we work we can just have a phone call we can have an email we can go and visit them on their farm uh, we're very free to how we operate um so the things i thought john that uh i think are valuable for people just generally to know is i'd just like to talk a, a bit about how to how to look at your business as a from a like a doctor looks at a person, a bit of a health check. And then I wanted to touch on a business plan, uh, whether, you know, people often cringe when they hear those words, but just just a couple of key issues about that. Uh, financial structure, I find a lot of vegetable uh, growers uh, don't have the right structure in their business. I've dealt with quite a few over the last few years. Um, briefly, I want to talk about your relationship with your bank, something a lot of people don't don't put a lot of thought into and it's a good one just to raise and then a little bit about risk management um, and preparing for the future uh, and then getting through you know getting back to the world normal world we're in this sort of strange um, world at the moment but saying that you know once we get through this how can people uh, move forward so there, that's pretty well the agenda I, I, I'm not quite sure how long you've I should have asked you this before but how long you want to talk, but I'll talk as little or as long as you like. Sounds great, Chris. I'll let you take it away. Okay. Well, the, the business health check to start with, and again, uh, saying again, you know, some of some growers who will know all this stuff and have done it all back to front and will know it. But for others, it might just give them a couple of ideas of things to think about. So, if you're running a, a, a business in horticulture, or pretty well in anything, uh, there's probably about seven or eight key things that, that will tell you whether your business is in good shape or not. Um, firstly, it starts off with you as the uh, manager or operator of the business. You know, uh, When your accountant does your financials each year, hopefully that happens one way or another, I know a lot of farmers I deal with in all sorts of areas, not just in horticulture, don't really understand what they're reading when they get their financial statements, uh, their assets and liabilities, uh, their cash flow statement. A lot of people look at that for five minutes, close it up, and that's all they ever, you know, wait till next year till the accountant sends another book. So I just think if you, if you don't understand those key measures in there, it's something that needs to be looked at. And again, obviously you can do that with your accountant uh, or you know, we can help you do that too. But it's really important to understand your balance sheet and what, what that actually means. Um, so, yeah, so I guess that's point one of a health check. Do, do you actually understand the financial information you have? Uh, the second one, which is very relevant to Vegetables WA, is about benchmarking. Um, and nearly every industry has it. And certainly Vegetables WA have done a great job in the last couple of years with, uh, with Bryn and the project. And we are really positive about that project because we a lot of our work in the rural financial counselling sphere has been with broad acre farmers. And for quite a few years, we've been using the benchmarks that were developed by Bank West and, and uh, the farm consultant groups. Uh, and we were using that very successfully. So, so now that Vegetables WA are driving that, um, we think that's a fantastic thing. And again, if you're not part of that Vegetables WA project, I'd really we always encourage everyone to join it. Um, but if if you're not, you know, we can we can talk to you about that as well and about what how it helps as as obviously Bryn can. Uh, the next point in your financial health list is a pretty obvious one, but you know, every business and particularly in farming and even more particularly in horticulture, you can make a loss. You know, in a year, there's 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 no guarantees and horticulture does have some high risks about it. But what we say is if you've made a loss for three of the last five years, that really uh, rings an alarm bell. So, you know, having one, having two, but once you've had three in five years, you're really, you know, under pressure. So that's a, that's a real red flag. The next one is, uh, are you able to meet your financial commitments when they do? If you're constantly juggling, debts all the time. I mean, everyone goes through that particular times of the year where you have your 
peak debt period and low cash flow. But, but if you find you're doing that all year round, that's another red flag. And then a real big one that banks and other finances take a, financiers take a real note of is, do you clear your overdraft at least once a year? That's, that's what overdrafts were designed to be, was, was to be cleared at, one, at least once a year. They're not meant to be core debt, long-term debt. Unfortunately, in a lot of businesses, the overdraft does become just a fixed debt all the time, and that's not healthy. Uh, next one would be, you know, if you're up with your BAS uh, work, if, if you, you're uh, behind on your BAS, if you owe money to the ATO, that's a red flag, if, uh, which is pretty obvious. Now, getting to the, the human elements, you know, that a lot of people feel this. Do you feel stressed around the financial position of your business? Um, John, I find a lot of farmers tend to, they love getting out and planting and harvest and all the things that go on. But the minute it comes to looking at the finances, the blood pressure goes up and they actually tend to walk out of the room and leave it to their partner, their, their wife, their brother, whoever, and, and don't want to know about it. And that, that's a real yeah. sign. Um, and if that impacts on your family, who, you know, often in, in our business in vegetable growing or whatever, you know, it's a family business. And if that causes stress yeah. amongst your family, that's another red flag. So if your family are fighting if, and, and disagreeing, you know, all the time, you know, that's another flag that you need some sort of support. And the final one in, in the checklist is, do you have support within your business? Now that could mean a good accountant that you have trust in or a bank, uh, manager or relationship manager in the bank, but you, you really need someone external that you can talk to and trust. And it's amazing how many people do not have that these days. So, um, so that's the, the list there. There was six, there's nine points in that checklist, but, uh, and again, happy to send that to anyone individually or whatever to have a look at. Uh, but it's a great one. Uh, does that all make sense to you, John? Yeah, that makes great sense, Chris. Yeah. You know, all of those things, I mean, all businesses get under pressure. It doesn't matter which business you are, whether you're big, small, whatever, but there's always pressure points. But it's really about the how long the pressure goes. And you can only put up with that for so long, you know, and it starts to crack, you know, on people. They start losing, you know, sleep. Uh, they start making poorer decisions because they, they're irritable. Or, you know, they can't discuss things. And, and in our job as rural financial counsellors, we see that a lot and we can help people break some of that down. Yeah, uh, the next chapter of, of what I wanted to talk about today, and, and feel free, John, uh, to ask any questions as we go along, but um, it was just about having a business plan or a business strategy. Now, people think, oh, God, what, why do I need that? What's that about? And it's actually not about ending up with a book of, of 50 pages that says my business plan. It's actually about writing the plan. And uh, I'm sure, John, you would find this in Vegetables WA too, that when you make a plan to do something, it's actually developing the plan that really is where you learn and where you, 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 you get the benefit of sharing, um, you know, if your family is sitting there together saying, what are... You know, what are our goals for this year, for the next five years? Where do we want to be in 2024 or, or whatever? And a lot of people never have those discussions. They just go on every day on a grind and they really don't have a goal of where they're going. So writing down a plan can be very helpful in identifying some key things about what is it that makes you want to be doing what you're doing. Um, let's say the the vegetable grower is a male farmer, you know, and he's married and his partner, you know, does his partner have the same objectives as he does you know, or vice versa or as, as she does, you know, if it's, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a common thing. I, I've dealt with a lot of families and what one partner wants to put a, go bigger and get more land. And the other one actually wants to get smaller and reduce stress, things like that. So, that's where a business plan, it's really helpful. And the final part of that one is the other part it's also helpful in is if we're dealing with a bank or seeking to refinance, uh, being able to give a bank a business plan is gold. And in this day, I, I find now with any bank, I, I do help a lot of people refinance. 
and we're always pretty well have to have a business plan now anyway. So it's a good thing in many ways. Um, the third thing on the agenda, John, was the financial structure, you know, and particularly in horticulture, a lot of businesses have grown organically. They haven't grown with a plan. Uh, they've often started as small businesses, maybe grandparents, great grandparents, what you know, started it, and it's just gone on and just grown. Um, and often the financials, it outgrows the financial structure. And I'm amazed at how many, uh, not only vegetable growers, but fruit growers and vegetable growers, orchardists, and market gardener operations uh, don't have a financial structure. They base their business on their mortgage on their house. And as a result, they're actually not running with commercial debt. They're basically using the, the equity in their their home to fund finance their business. Uh, when you're very small, that's okay. But once as you get a little bit bigger and you might have had a, a son or a daughter come into the business, you, you actually need a, a better structure than that. And using your debt from your you know, from the house you live in to fund your business has some risks in that, you know, you're risking losing your house if things go wrong. But also it's not commercial debt, so you can't actually claim on it uh, to get a tax benefit out of it. Um, so structuring your debt in a commercial sense sometimes may cost you more interest, but the other benefits outweigh it. So I just think everyone needs to have a look at that, what their financial structure is. Uh, many other um, growers I've dealt with, you know, they actually don't have formal overdrafts and they're using credit card debt, things like that, to fund themselves. And, it's the most expensive debt and there's better ways to do it and they can talk to us and we can help them with that. Um, now we lead up to the relationship with banks and lenders. Anyone over say 40 will know that not that many years ago, if you loaned money off of a bank, often the bank manager would come out to your block every year, or maybe a couple of times a year, sit at the kitchen table, uh, talk about what you were doing and, you know, you'd actually shake hands and you'd go, you'd probably give him a few vegetables and a boot on the way out and, uh, and uh, he'd be happy and you'd be happy. Uh, uh, and, it, you know, that's how it used to work. But what that meant was that sitting in a bank somewhere, there was someone that knew you, knew your family, knew a bit about your business and so on. Moving towards 2020, it's amazing how many people can have significant debts and not have anyone in a bank. The banks have basically said, oh, look, if, you've, if you're under a million dollars, we don't really assign anyone to you. It's just a, you know, a million dollars is a lot of money in a, in a horticultural sense. You've got to make a, you've got to grow a lot of something to, to pay that, pay that off. And you can be dealing with any of the banks and not have a, a relationship manager. So basically you ring up and they say, oh, your account number, what's the problem, you know, what that's it. They're helpful as they can be, but they don't know you. So I think this is a key thing that, forget whether your debt's 100,000, 50,000 or a million or 2 million. Uh, you, there is, you, you need to know someone in a bank that you can talk to that understands your business. And once you get to know them, inviting them onto your block to come and see you, meet your family, meet your, the team that you work with is gold. Because once you've done that, uh, uh, they, they treat, they, I find they treat you very differently. Yeah. And that's a, that's a, you know, probably in the last 10 years of, if, if there's one thing I've noticed in all farming, not just in horticulture, but you know, the banks have become distanced to the, the customer in many ways in, in the agri sector, there's less agri bankers, there's less, you know, the banks have cut costs and so on. So, so that's a real big one about building a relationship with your bank. Uh, the next one I just thought would quickly touch on is, is risk management. Uh, and again, for any business, but particularly horticulture, you know, are you prepared for sort of disaster management? I think most farms and most growers of, of vegetables have a plan in their mind, you know, what if electricity goes off in the peak of summer? How do they get water? Um, what if they lose their labour? You know, what do they do? Do they, do they actually have a plan for a crisis? 
And you know what I find, John, is that most growers I've dealt with have a plan. Yeah. But what they don't cover is themselves. So the key person in the business, you know, what if he breaks his leg or breaks his arm or, or has a heart attack or something? Does it, who, who's got all the information that's in his or her head, that, that the key person in the business? And again, that, that's the sort of thing that someone needs to have a, you know, you, everyone needs to have a backup in their business, just like I'm sure you do, John, in vegetables, stubby way. You know, we're all got to yeah. be replaced yeah. sometime. So there's got to be a sort of a backup plan. The physical things like electricity, water, you know, there's always plans and there's some great services around that guarantee you, you know, they'll be out on your place to fix your pump within a certain time and so on. But those things need to be written down and recorded in case the key person that runs the business isn't able to do it. Uh, then that risk management leads on to estate management, the old classics, wills, life insurance, you know, and again, because we don't sell anything in the, in the job I do, I love it talking about this stuff because I'm not here to try and sell you any particular policy or like that. But uh, it's amazing how many people run a business with a debt and they don't have even the most basic life insurance that say, you know, covers their debt. Um, you know, it, it's a pretty basic principle of running a business. That's, let's say you generally owe a, a million dollars. So my way of looking at that is that the key people in the business should have life insurance to cover that million dollar debt. So that if they, something did happen and the, you know, as sad as it is, they died, they're not leaving their family a million dollars debt that at least that can be clear. So they're the sort of things again, that I, I think people need to talk about and look at. Uh, and that goes on to wills, obviously having, that are up to date. You know, a lot of people make a will and then they never think of it again. Things change, and and I I deal with a lot of people, a lot of families where they've had to, you know, sort of left with, you know, the tragedy of losing a family member and then having a will that's out of date and creates huge you know, issues. So, uh, more I, more farms are broken up and lost because of poor estate planning or ever broken up by poor droughts or, or, or by droughts or poor prices. So, uh, the final one in that one, John, is about succession planning, about the plan of, you know, do, do you and your family have a clear plan of what's going to happen in the future? Who's going to retire and when? Is it actually in writing? Is, has there been a family meeting about it? Is there a regular, you know, maybe once a year you have that talk? Um, you know, it's something in writing about the plan. Boy, that can save a lot of stress if you do that. Uh, and then finally, I guess, well, I guess that, that leads, there's another thing there that, you know, when you, you know, dealing with families and generational change, the big question I raise with people is saying, so when you leave this property and you want to retire into to Bustleton or Margaret River or Perth or wherever you live, want to live, or you might want to stay on the farm and your kids take over. Do you want to leave your kids an asset or a liability? And I mean, a liability is a business that's got a debt and can't service the debt. And if you leave it, leave your kids with that, boy, that's not much of a thing to leave. So again, with planning, you can make that different. You know, you can work out different ways of doing it. Yep. Um, and it starts with having a talk with someone like us or, 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 you know, I mean, it could be talking with your financial advisor or whoever, but your account, your account's another great resource. Yeah. Good point, Chris. Yeah. And then finally, John, um, you know, this sort of thing of moving beyond with this, this world we're in right now, which is a bit unusual. And I know growers are, I talk to growers every day who've been impacted by the COVID-19. You know, some products are in higher demand, others are in lower demand. Um, you know, it's, it's amazing the difference. Some people seem to be doing okay and others, it's, you know, their, their, their crops have basically been turned back into the ground. It's a, it's a really extreme difference for some people. So we're going to get through this and we're, if, I think I'm feeling like we're, getting out, you know, the, the lights at the end of the tunnel. 
But I guess it's a wake up call for every business to say, well, what is our plan for the future? What if this happens again next year? What if um, mm -hmm. you know, in 2022, there's another sort of traumatic event um, that affects us like this? So I, I guess this is a great opportunity for businesses to have a review and have a talk about what their future is and how they're going to manage that if this happens again.